Good morning. Welcome to Member Focus Monday. I'm Christina Schaefer, Director of Social Media for HAR, and I'm very excited about this morning's guest. As you know by my title, I love social media, and so does Marky. Welcome, Marky Lemons Real. So excited to have you here today. Well, thank you for having me this morning. It is a great day. It's a actually it's a marvelous Monday in the almighty world of real estate. And I am glad to join you virtually all the way from the south side of the city of Chicago. And I love all things social media just like you. Absolutely. I was um, mentioning this episode with a, with a few of our staff people and I said I'm ready to nerd out with about social media with Marky Marky this morning. So Let's <laughs> let's do it. So um, I want to uh, start though for our members who don't know you yet, which I don't know how they do, how they wouldn't. But for our members who don't know you yet, if you could just tell us a little bit about who you are and and what you do. Well, what's going on, Houston? I'm your girl, Marky Lemons Rao, real estate keynote speaker, four time international best selling author eight-time speaker at the Realtor Conference and Expo virtually and person-to-person or face-to-face with high evaluations. I've had the opportunity to serve the world of real estate pretty much in every capacity that I desire as an avid volunteer, major donor, and president circle. I believe in all things realtor, not just real estate, realtor-related. Wonderful. And Marky, like you said, you are a keynote speaker. Um, you are, you have a passion for social media, as we mentioned. Can you tell me just why did you become so passionate about social media marketing and and when did that take place? So I'm going to go back to 2006 when I was at home on maternity leave with my youngest son, Austin. I was then reading the 2006 profile of buyers and sellers from the National Association of Realtors. It told me that in 1995, 2% of consumers were utilizing the internet as their source of real estate information. However, when I was at home on maternity leave, that number was 80%. So I pulled out my fingers and I got to counting (laughs) and I realized that that was a 78% increase in a decade. And so I Googled my name and my name came up less than 10 times. And I realized I was not hanging out online where the buyers and the sellers were hanging out. If we take a look at that 2020 profile of buyers and sellers, 97% of consumers are going to utilize the internet or the web, right, as their Mm -hmm. information source. And the mass majority of them are going to do it from the palm of their hand. So if we want to be successful, we have to hang out where the consumers are hanging out. And right now, social media, technology, internet, mobile, mobile capability optimization is going to be key to our success. Yes, very good. So I'm going to start off with a question that we get asked all of the time, and that is, what platform do you think benefits realtors the most? So this is not one size fits all, okay? (laughs) Uh, At the end of the day, you need to understand who your consumer is. Um, To me, for me, As a 51-year-old woman, as I tell people, I am as typical of a realtor as a realtor could be. I'm female. I'm age 51. I'm married. I own my house. I have a college degree. So when we go back and look at the profile of realtors, I am your typical realtor. (laughs) With that being said, Facebook is my sweet spot. 78% of my audience on Facebook is female and they're right in the same age bracket of 45 to 54. That means that we're experiencing everything together, right? At the moment we got married, the likelihood is now we're a two income household, which means the price point goes up and we're not on our first home, right? So that means we had a sizable down payment to upgrade. So the reason I'm telling you these numbers is because I don't do what everyone else does. I do what my consumers do, what buyers and sellers in my sphere who on a, basically they need to be in my age bracket to afford what it is that I'm selling mm-hmm. versus my 25 year old son who is a recent college graduate. Even though he has a phenomenal job as a consultant at Accenture, his price point is not the same as my price point because they're really still on their very first job, right? Mm -hmm. And so he would not hang out necessarily on the same platforms I'm hanging out on because that isn't where his consumers are hanging out. 
Now, the reason I understand this consumer <laughs> consumer data is that I do have an MBA degree, 1996. I started teaching on a collegiate level. I taught marketing. So before social media and technology came about, I always needed to understand who my consumer, my customer was. I just took those same strategies and applied them to social media and technology. So mm -hmm. you hang out where your consumers hang out. So I decided, I think I told you this, uh, a couple of months ago, I deleted Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Clubhouse. Mm. And I did it for numerous reasons. One, because I wasn't doing a good job. So you gotta be honest with yourself. Are you doing a good job? <laughs> like, are you consistent <laughs> on these platforms? If you don't have the time to be consistent, you need to look at the numbers and let go of some things. I let go of four platforms mm -hmm. with the purpose of focusing on one platform I wanted to bring more visualization and utilization to YouTube because you can monetize YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so I let go of these four platforms, not just because I wasn't doing a good job, but also because the customer who I desire to serve is less likely to hang out here. The next thing is I didn't need Clubhouse. I produce a podcast. We're on our hundredth episode. I didn't need Snapchat or TikTok because I wanted to focus on reels inside of Instagram, which is now officially on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So I let it go for numerous reasons, but they were all business reasons, nothing personal. Okay, very good. So you mentioned a few things about your audience on these platforms and and for our members who have maybe never really thought about this, how did you find that information out? How do you know the age range of, you know, your friends on Facebook, for example? Well, you know what? I know that on Thursday we're doing a class, a deep dive on Instagram. So let's go to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I, I got a couple of Instagram tips. The first thing is I don't think any realtor, they're getting ready to get, your members are getting ready to get mad at me. <laughs> No realtor needs a private account if they're not making the amount of money they desire to make because secret agents don't get found. So <laughs> let's just do all this privacy posting. You don't have time for that. And I just want to let you know that. And unless you, you got to have a whole lot of money, okay, to, to have time for private accounts. So the first thing is you want to have business accounts set up. And on Facebook, you would want to have groups. But on Instagram, right now, I highly recommend a creator account because you get all of the analytics plus you get access to the full music library i'm looking at my analytics i know that over on instagram my makeup is a little different it is not 78 percent female it is 73 percent female with that number one age category being 45 to 54 followed by 35 to 40 that is still a huge audience, right, mm -hmm. of 22,000 people. And so I've often questioned, should I just say forget men, right, that make up 30%, give or take, of my audience? But I decided I didn't want to do that at the expense of putting them down. But I definitely talk about female issues, things that are going to mm -hmm. impact women at the age of 50. Simple things like the fact that we wear bifocals at this age. The mass majority, it starts right at between 40 and 50, right? So I use a large font and I talk about using a large font because I need everybody to see what it is that I'm saying. <laughs> um, and so with that being said, you cannot, private accounts are not going to give you analytics, okay? You want to use business accounts across the platforms and you want to go in and take a look at your analytics to understand who your audience is how they're engaging, and what content did they like the most? Because it's not about you, it's about them. Yeah, very good. And I just want to make a uh, mention, Marky mentioned Thursday. If you don't know, Marky is actually going to be speaking at this year's Virtual Engage Conference. So if you have not registered for that yet, take a moment to do so, hkr.com slash engage, um, because you want to hear what she has to say about Instagram on Thursday as well. Um, and I do see a couple comments coming in. Uh, Rhonda said she, lo she loves that she joined, and the first thing that she heard was, I don't do what everyone else does. <laughs> so very good. Um, yeah, so if you have questions, though, for Marky, type those in, and we'll get to those in a little bit. So um, I, I know you're very passionate about video and I think for a lot of realtors, they, they might be intimidated. So why do you believe that video marketing is so important for realtors? Well, the first thing, 
because I am that typical realtor, a female, age 51, um, things are not standing as high as they used to, uh, especially in the face area, right? <laughs> so we get a few wrinkles and imperfections. If I was there with you physically, you would quickly realize I am likely the shortest, darkest, roundest person in the room with the least amount of hair. Now, I have no problems pointing out what others might perceive as imperfections, even though I am perfectly created. I create video content every single day. If you don't like how you look, put a filter on it. But more importantly, people do not care about how you look. People want you to solve their buying and selling problems. I operate my business at a 65.9% profitability because I don't care about how people think that I look. But what I am going to do is give solid, sound advice consistently. So let me tell you why I believe in video. And the longer I do video, um, the, the, the more the confirmation and affirmation for doing video comes. And this mm -hmm. is what I would say. I'm at the grocery store maybe two months ago. I have a mask on because we still have mask mandates here in the city of Chicago. I'm in the grocery store and I'm talking to myself. I want you to understand this. <laughs> I got my mobile device out. I'm looking for MCT oil. Okay. And so I'm like, MCT oil, MCT oil. Where is the MCT oil? A gentleman walks up behind me and he says to himself, he's not talking to me. He says, I knew, I knew that voice. Now, I pause because people stop me all the time because they know my voice or they know how my eyes look. Now, this is getting scary, guys, okay? <laughs> and I turn around. I said, what did you say? Say that again. He says, I knew I knew that voice. He said, you are the realtor extraordinaire. I don't remember your name, but it starts with an M. My wife watches your videos so the new joke here in chicago is your husband should not know my voice but a lot of people don't take the audio the fact that we have all of this great content into consideration video is the only form of content that you can repurpose without recreating if a picture's worth 1000 words then one minute of live video content is equivalent to 1.8 million words. I don't do what everyone else does, but I should not be one of the most visible realtors on the south side of the city of Chicago when I spend up to 100 nights per year on the road. Video has allowed me that opportunity. Yeah, very good. Um, so we, <laughs> there's a couple comments about the MCT oil <laughs> as well, but so you mentioned some platforms that you got rid of because you wanted to focus on IG Reels or in YouTube. Um, so where should realtors be posting these videos? Are those the platforms you recommend or are there other places that they should be posting as well? So when I come back to my video creation on every single platform, the algorithm is going to accommodate live streaming video. So I like to originate my content as live streaming video because I'm going to get the most engagement in the midst of the pandemic, when we were having social uh, unrest here in the city of Chicago, I did one Facebook Live video that received over 50,000 views. And for every view, we received a $1 donation mm -hmm. to V77, which is our diversity committee. So I single-handedly raised over $50,000 for a video that was less than one hour, okay? Wow. Um, and, and so these are, this is the power of video numbers, right? So I believe in live stream and video. And then you do that to the platform that you have the most engagement. And if it is on Facebook, you do it to the group that you have the most people, whether that's your personal account, a group or a business page. So I tend to do my video content to my personal page because I stay at the 5,000 friend limit, but I have over 10,000 followers on my personal page, mm -hmm. okay? Because I'm gonna get more engagement. Once that video is no longer live, you download it and then you repurpose it across the additional platforms that you're on. The reason for me repurposing my video content, Mari Smith, who is a Facebook insider and strategist, just did a study where 
when you post a post, you're only going to get about 5% engagement and visibility on that one piece of content. Well, to me, 5% is failure, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, I'm going back to the grading systems, yeah, A, B, C, D. <laughs> that means that for me to attempt to get an A, I need to find 20 different ways to repost, reshare, or repurpose that video content. But earlier we talked about something, and that was the fact that, and we this was me and you offline talking mm -hmm. about how many realtors want to have someone manage their social media. Mm -hmm. Here is my recommendation, and this is the only recommendation you're going to ever get from me on this subject. Is it okay to have someone manage your social media? Yes. Only, I'm going to put this in, only if you are giving them video content. The reason is because your face and your voice will be attached to every single piece of content. If you aren't creating video content, nope, you shouldn't have somebody manage it because it is not going to sound and or look like you. Mm -hmm. But I outsource my video content for my podcast, for my blog post, for my email marketing, for my photo quotes. And every piece of marketing has marky in it. Marky, 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 marky. So can you hire someone? Yes. But my recommendation is only if you are willing to sit down to create the video content. If not, what they're putting out there is going to be, it's going to be diluted. It's not going to have mm -hmm. you uh, represent, you're not going to be represented in that marketing. You're going to look similar to the other 100, 200 accounts that they're managing. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Very good. So um, it's interesting. I was about to ask you, what would you say to a realtor that is afraid of getting on video? And we actually had a comment that came in. I'm so nervous. I have not done one video. So what would you say to um, a realtor that's maybe hearing this, is considering it, but is nervous about getting on camera? Well, the first thing is that every platform has a filter. So mm -hmm. if you're concerned with how you look, put a filter on it. But a couple of other things. The first thing, and I just had to tell my son this yesterday as he was sitting in this same chair recording video, you have to look directly into the camera, right? I know when someone's not looking into the camera because you know they're not looking at you. That means that you're looking at yourself. If you know mm -hmm. how cute or uncute you think you might look, not cute, uncute, pick one of those words. But if you know how you look or if you know that you have uh, lipstick on your teeth, you're looking in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. The reason to look directly into the camera is to build trust with the person you're creating the video for. The next thing is light should never be behind your head, right? So I have great light coming in and you could tell I have a little bit more light up under my arm because it's natural sunlight. So the light should always be on your face, never behind your head. Your devices should always be elevated to be, let me move it over here, to be at or above <laughs> eye level because there's nothing cute going on down here in your <laughs> neck or your chin area, okay? So if you get your lighting correct and you elevate your device, you're positioning yourself to look the best you could possibly look anyway. And who's showing up to show the buyer the property or at the listing appointment? So we're talking to people who are going to get to see us anyway. And I'm married. I've been married 15 years. You think I want a woman showing up at my house to sell my house with keys to my house to access my house and she look a whole lot better than me? Mm, no, I don't want that. And I trust my, and I believe my husband is loyal and faithful. <laughs> but you're not getting ready to come up in here looking all dazzled up, uh, making me look like a slouch. We're not going to do that. So there's not a wife or a husband in the world. Won't you coming into their house outshining them? <laughs> That was a very good point. <laughs> um, so we, we did have some questions coming in. Um, and if you do have a question for Marky, please type them in and we'll try to get to as many of them as we can. Um, so I, we had uh, Bernard actually said that he has tons of content. How much does it take to get started? Uh, I tell Bernard it don't take anything to get started. When I did that video that raised $50,000 for the 77, um, I'm kind of ashamed of the t-shirt I had on. I should have threw that t-shirt away. It was, it was entirely too tight, but I didn't have any makeup on. There was a time that I needed to go get a fresh haircut and I needed to go to Mac to get my makeup done. And I needed to go get me a pretty new dress 
because I would not allow you to see me in the same dress twice. Mm. We have to stop getting ready to get ready. All right. Now, besides the fact of the $50,000, I did a video sitting in my car, no camera, no special equipment called Crabs in a Barrel. It received over 20,000 views as a Facebook Live video, but it landed me on a talk show quarterly for that calendar year. I have another video on domestic abuse. It's been viewed probably over 20,000 times now. It was actually dark in the car because it was about 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time here in Chicago, and it was dark outside. So the two things that we need to do is we have to have good content, and we must be consistent. You don't need any special equipment, and the proof is in the pudding. So I don't tell realtors to do something that I've not done consistently. I don't mm -hmm. just tell you to do what I do. I've done it consistently. I have thousands of videos between Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And you will can go look at them, and you'll be like, okay, yep, she was just sitting in her car, or she put a fun filter on it. It's about the consistency because people know that I'm consistently showing up, so I've built that trust. Mm -hmm. But then I'm doing research to solve their problems in real time. Wonderful. And actually, that was another question that was coming in is uh, Almas asked, what type of device do you recommend? Well, from let me say this. I have a Android. Uh, I tell people you need to get your phone every two years. OK, uh, if your phone cannot scan a QR code from the camera app, your phone is old and it's time to update it. <laughs> Went out with my aunt the other day and we had to ask for a paper menu because our device is too old to scan the QR <laughs> code. OK, um, I do have an iPad, but I only have an iPad for the purpose of knowing what Apple looks like to a realtor. Mm -hmm. But I am not a Apple girl. I am sitting right now in front of a gaming computer. No, I don't play any games, okay? But because of the video capability. So mm -hmm. I have a gaming H, uh, HP computer. I have a Apple device for the purpose of just knowing what Apple looks like and feels like. And I have a Android, Samsung, S20, whatever. It's time to get a new one. I'm uh, about 18 months on this contract. And guess what? My favorite camera to use, because most of your computers will not have a good camera, is I have a Logitech camera, okay? I did go and purchase, because I didn't even have a backup for the backup, I did go and purchase this inexpensive camera uh, off of Amazon, which I do not recommend. So <laughs> I love the Logitech camera. Well, I needed to buy one to tell you what not to do, mm -hmm. right? Because I couldn't say, oh, don't use those little $59 cameras. I'm going to recommend that you probably invest about $100. But here's the thing. I don't need any of this equipment because I have videos without any equipment that have outperformed all of this staged video content. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons, though, for me doing video, let's come back, is for the lead generation aspect. So in order to earn a six-figure income, if you don't already have a database that you're communicating with effectively, you need to add 2,880 contacts if you want to earn $100,000 and your average price point is $250,000, which I would say probably most of the country right now has an average price point higher than $250,000. With that being said, I am not doing, I don't cold call, I don't door knock. I'm mm -hmm. adding those contacts because I'm spending one hour per day leveraging social media technology with a video and a call to action to take people to my landing page. That's that's what it's all about to me, communicating mm -hmm. to get you to opt in. I give you something of real estate value in exchange for your information. Okay. And in the last 60 days, I have closed on three listing referrals. Customers came to me, I'm traveling, I refer it to another agent. I've gotten paid on those deals. I have other deals. People are cleaning houses out because they see me online in video. They know what I do. They can't act like they don't know what I do. <laughs> and they're like, hey, Marky, uh, I have a real estate question for you. Oh, well, let me see what I can do. Would you like to meet? Would you like me to refer you to someone? And that's how we facilitate that. But I make it easy for them. I make it easy, warm, and welcoming 
for them to just slide into the DM with their referrals. Okay. We had a couple questions about content. Um, if we want to talk about content for a little bit, um, one of the questions, it just said, what do I say? Give me some good topics to speak on. Um, and then, um, someone else said, when you say domestic abuse, uh, you were talking about the video that you, that you had. Um, so it, it says, so it means it doesn't have to be real estate related. So. Oh, I would probably say over 50% of my videos are not real estate related. It's for people to get to know, like, and trust me. Mm -hmm. um, until I did the video, well, let me let me just go with my top three videos. The number one video was, I, it wasn't about police violence, but it was definitely about the fact that we had disruption, riots, and looting here in the city of Chicago, and I needed help, Okay. Uh, it raised the $50,000. My second video, most popular video, is Crabs in a Barrel Mentality. When I tell the story of being a fifth generation entrepreneur, my grandfather came from Mississippi with one pair of shoes. My family owns Chicago's second oldest black restaurant. We've been in business since 1954. We have sold more pork rib tips than anybody else in the city of Chicago. The reason for the story is if you ever eat at Famous Dave's Barbecue, there's a picture of Lim's Barbecue in every Famous Dave. Because when they wanted to open their barbecue restaurant, they came to Lim's Barbecue to talk to my grandfather, James Lemons, and he told him everything. And I'm going to say how my granddaddy would say it. He told him everything about the barbecue business. Mark, you tell him everything because competition <laughs> is healthy for business. So I talk about why I'm willing to share. It is because my grandfather came from Mississippi with nothing. And he died a multimillionaire and his and his establishment is in every famous Dave's barbecue because he was willing to share about the barbecue business. That's the second most popular. And the third most popular definitely would be the domestic abuse video where I spoke on the fact that my father was uh, physically abusive to my mother. He beat her up two times. She had had enough. The third time she commenced to she whooped his butt and he never laid hands on her again in life. So that would be the third video. So I I am very intimate. I don't have secrets. You're not getting ready to come and shame me for nothing in my past because I'm going to tell it to you just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And that was a lesson learned from my teenage mother. So I tell a lot of stories about uh, being uh, the child of teenage parents, right? Um, and the insanity that often comes with that, but uh, the good parenting that came out of it as well. So... Besides all of these personal things that I share, you can go right now to google.com forward slash trends. <clears throat> and when we go to google.com forward slash trends, and I'm going to do this with you in real time, uh, it says enter a search topic. I'm going to come over and I'm going to enter the search topic real estate. When I enter that search topic real estate, it's going to tell me, show me the past year over time. It's going to show me the states that people are doing the most searching in. But when I get to the bottom, it's going to say, what does pending mean in real estate, commercial real estate sales near me, wholesale real estate, uh, how to get into real estate. So these are some of the terms that have increased substantially. When I look at what does pending mean in real estate, that means that buyers and sellers are searching this term because we as agents haven't provided an adequate answer. That would be first <laughs> and foremost. But then we have to also look at the fact that a how many newcomers have we had to the industry who don't know what that term means either, right? So I would then take that term from google.com forward slash trans, uh, what does pending mean in real estate? And I would then go over to answerthepublic.com. I would put that in and it'll likely give me anywhere from 250 to 350 different ways that people are asking that question. I'm going to take that and pivot it to my marketplace, my property type, and local terminology. So what do I mean by that? It says, what does pending mean in real estate? What does pending mean in Chicago? What does pending mean on a condo? What does pending mean on a multifamily dwelling? So I can, what does, you know, break it out based on community and property type. So I am often talking the way that people are searching the internet because they're willing to tell you how they're searching. One of the reasons for Facebook, <clears throat> where outside of Facebook can you go and learn all about a person in real time for no money? 
You know, historically, yeah. you'd have to at least get up, put your clothes on, go to the bar, uh, buy somebody a cocktail. Now, to find out the stuff I'm finding <laughs> out, you would have to at least get them intoxicated. So Facebook is the only place in the world that a sober person will tell you all their business in real time. <laughs> but for, for no money. So mm-hmm. I'm often just sitting here in the comfort of my home and I'm an investigator. I, I am the real estate FBI and the DEA and I'm going to put it all together for the purpose of delivering and delivering an answer. Mm-hmm. Solving people's problems in real time. And Facebook is not the only place. On every last one of these platforms you can do the same thing. Wonderful. Um, so we have a few more questions that have come through so I want to try to get through um, get to some of these here. Um, this was just a comment. Shannon said, I need to, I need to just stop collecting information on how to do it and do it. So yes, <laughs> good comment there. Um, stop getting ready to get ready. Yes, absolutely. Um, they also thanked you for the advice on the Google trends. Um, Teresa Hughes Hill asked, what are your thoughts on TikTok for real estate videos? I just interviewed a TikTok expert. I believe TikTok definitely has its place. I like TikTok. I've had fun on TikTok. Mm -hmm. TikTok just isn't the primary place that my audience is going to hang out, which is why I eliminated it. Um, What I'm doing now is investing in Instagram Reels and in Facebook Reels. So my very first Facebook Reel that I posted the other day, just to kind of give you uh, an example, I don't need to go and implement a new platform. I need to go deeper on the platforms that I'm already on because I already understand those analytics. So before I'm going to implement something new, I want to see how to enhance what I'm already doing. That's my, that's a personal business decision. Mm -hmm. So let me go. I posted an Instagram reels the other day. It has received 2,900 views. So now it's outperforming those recent lives in a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. And what was it? Me and my oldest, my oldest son, he is not a good dancer. I made him record a little video of us dancing together, right? No music, because I figured if we had something in sync, I could go and put it to some music. Mm -hmm. So I went and took the video with no music and put it to music over on Facebook. So I believe in TikTok if that is where your audience is hanging out. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I personally at 51 don't need TikTok. I need to now invest in Reels because of the growth of Reels on Instagram and now on Facebook. Yeah. And um, you can probably speak to this a little bit more, but I know a lot of times when these platforms introduce a new feature like Reels, they tend to push them at people more. So, like you're saying, hopping on early to reels on Facebook, it's a it's a very good strategy. Oh, th- two thousand nine hundred views mm-hmm. on something new that mm-hmm. was here. As a matter of fact, let's just go on and play. Let me see. <laughs> two thousand nine hundred yeah. views for that. That wasn't even fifteen seconds, right? Yeah. It's just, and I'm gonna leverage Skyler. He's doing his first. Uh, home buying seminar this Wednesday. So I just went to him to his photo shoot, Mm -hmm. captured behind the scenes content that I'm now repurposing in order to market it for his home buyer masterclass. So you got to think in advance and you have to plan. And I told him, I said, Skyler, you, he says, oh, these new polos I have. I said, well, bring me a polo. Let me dress like you too, (laughs) right? And now uh, it's a lead generation to sending people over to register for the home buying seminar, and mm-hmm. we will have them captured now, right, in our customer relationship management system. Very good. Um, there was just a quick follow-up question here. Leticia said, are Instagram Reels feeding into Facebook or are they separate? Okay, so yes and no. <laughs> you Right now, there isn't a way to automate the push. What you have to do is go over to your Instagram account and in your privacy settings, set it up that your future Instagram Reels can be discovered over on Facebook. What I'm doing now is posting to both locations. Mm-hmm. Now, mind you, it, it's, it's, it's what, three weeks old, okay, just so we <laughs> testing mm-hmm. things out. <laughs> but there currently is not a push that will push it over, but you can definitely turn on the settings for it to be discovered. Okay, 
Very good. Um, this question came through a little while back. Um, Nancy said, did I hear correctly? Later.com is suggested for Instagram and it's analytical info. Well, we didn't say anything about later.com. Yeah. However, <laughs> I do use later.com. Uh, one of the reasons it, it became my primary system. I was a Hootsuite user since its inception. Um, I had the free version for years, grandfathered in at the $5.99 per month pricing until last year, or was it earlier this year, mm -hmm. when they decided that they were going to go from $5.99 per month to $75 per month, and I just couldn't justify that dollar mm -hmm. amount. So I am using uh, Later.com, and I am using Facebook Creator Studio. I will tell you something that I've tested this past week. I use a platform called Restream.io so that when I'm doing my live videos, I can broadcast. I broadcast to seven locations at one time. Well, because of the 5% rule on engagement, I'm now taking my videos, my live videos, and coming back 60, 90 days after the fact and rebroadcasting them as a nightly series. Mm -hmm. So, because you're only getting 5%, right? Mm -hmm. And you might have a few people who overlap and see it. And so, am I using later? Uh, yes, I am using later.com. It has great analytics, but Instagram itself has great analytics. Uh, so that is my preferred social media management platform. But I'm using later not only with Instagram, but also uh, I'm using it with LinkedIn and I'm using it with Pinterest. My Pinterest numbers sometimes are utterly ridiculous, especially with the video content. But here's the difference, Nancy. My audience on Pinterest is very young and they can't afford to buy what it is that I'm selling. Uh, 21 to 30 is that sweet spot for me on Pinterest. That means they're really more information gathering mm -hmm. and dreaming, not necessarily buying. Okay, very good. Um, thank you for that. So we um, also had a question about podcasts. You mentioned you have a podcast. Um, Carla was asking, do you recommend podcasts uh, for marketing? <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so I've had a podcast now uh, for two years. We are getting ready to deliver our 100th episode. I definitely believe that it changed my visibility, but I don't just have a podcast. Mm -hmm. I record my videos live to Facebook or to a private membership group, so I'm satisfying that. My videos for my podcast are repurposed over on YouTube into two different, uh, we have one channel with two different playlists. I then, the third form of content is the podcast. We also do audio to text transcription of our podcast which now means that I have a email that goes out every other week and I have a pod, I mean a podcast, a blog post <laughs> that goes out every other week. So podcasting for me is not just podcasting. It is uh, pretty much a hub and it's one piece of that hub system, but we're taking that video and what I'm telling you to do this 20 different times, I was already doing that. I just now have the data to back up why 20 <laughs> was such an ideal number, right? To get me to 100, even though I'm not going to get to 100, okay? Um, and so should you have a podcast, if you have the time to dedicate and if you're willing to record your podcast using video, most definitely because my podcast has built out my YouTube channel, my blogging, my email marketing, like it's going to drop every other week on a Tuesday at 10, 15 uh, mm -hmm. a.m. Central Standard Time and have been doing so for the past two years. And now I'm taking that and I'm repurposing it back to Restream with the nightly series, you know, months, a year after the fact uh, to get more visibility on that content. Excellent. Very good. Thank you. Um, we had a question really quick about um, CRM. I don't know if there's a CRM that you recommend. Um, I don't have a CRM that I recommend. I'll tell you what I've used in the past. Currently, I'm using Kajabi. I love Kajabi. It is an all-in-one system. Uh, the problem is that a lot of us have multiple systems and we never master one. I think you kind of might figure out I like simplicity and I'm doing everything based on the numbers. I came over to Kajabi from MailChimp. MailChimp is email marketing with the customer relationship management system and landing pages. 
I've also used Active Campaign and I've also used Infusionsoft. So I have invested a lot of money in customer relationship management systems. Normally, not the real estate focused ones, but the uh, the market and online marketer ones have been the ones that I invested in. I believe that you could do wonders with an Excel spreadsheet. So I believe everybody should test out three to five systems on a trial and go with the system that you feel the most comfortable using because that will dictate your success with the CRM. The CRM is not going to dictate your success. The consistency of using the system will dictate your success. Great, great advice. Um, so Marky, I'm sure you've inspired a lot of our members to um, get started with video. What would you say is the first step? What do they need to do if they want to start incorporating video into their marketing plan? Uh, the first step is to do a video, right? <laughs> to stop, to get over how you, because let me say this, we all have equipment sitting around that we don't use, right? And so I'm not going to tell you to invest in one piece of equipment. I want you to pick this phone up every day. I want, I'm trying to look around my office to see if I have my lens wipes. I want you to make sure that your lens is clean, right? Get you some lens wipes, okay? <laughs> um, and practice doing video every single day. Do it uh, at least, I would say, a month consistently before you invest in one piece of equipment. I don't want you to go and invest in any equipment. And I know that everybody wants these fine-tuned videos. I see people who spend thousands of dollars on videos and they don't make the money I make, okay? They don't get the return on the time. <laughs> they don't get they don't get nothing because the videos aren't engaging. They aren't consistent with the videos. They think that the drone video is going to be there everything and that's not true. <laughs> Consistency is going to be everything. So if you have a morning routine, record that morning routine and give a tip to consumers in your marketplace for 30 consecutive days. And then you can invest in some equipment. I can share with you a, a link to my Amazon store with all of the equipment that I have in my office and in my book bag. But the first step is to just consistently do it no matter what. For me, I put myself in the no excuse zone. I have a backup to the backup. So mm -hmm. every piece of equipment I have, I have two of them right i have a, a desktop but i also have a laptop i have i pulled you i'm recording with one camera but i got another camera right mm -hmm. i got an over the head mic but guess what i got uh some other mics back here right mm -hmm. i keep a backup to the backup of everything that i'm doing because i don't want to have any excuses to not do video content whether i'm in my office or whether i'm on the go so my book bag right now you see i keep everything in close proximity my book bag right now is ready to go, okay? Uh, it's a nice selfie stick in here. Here we go, right? It's a laptop in here. I have uh, ring lights in here because mm -hmm. it's the no excuse zone. So, I, and, I, and let me say this. The number one thing that I'm going to do is clean this lens off. You see, I got my little pop socket behind it. Mm -hmm. This is it. Communicating with people. Hey, what's going on today? How you doing, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's all you need. Yeah. Show up for people, embrace people, make yourself available to people. Um, you don't have to tell all your business like I tell all of mine, but my claim to fame is I have an intimate relationship. And people like that high level of intimacy or the fact that I tell them I got five good secrets I'm holding on to. I think I done told two of them, <laughs> but I'm just going to claim five in case it is five. Then I'm not going to tell y'all. I'm entitled to my five secrets, right? Um <laughs> Other than that, they know they can they can inbox me, they can get a response, um, but I'm consistent. So the first step is let people know who you are. Wonderful. A lot of our members are thanking you in the comments. Um, they really appreciate the information. They love what you're sharing. You rock. Um, so uh, thank you so much for everything you've shared. And of course, if you didn't hear it earlier, you can sign up for HR's Virtual Engage Conference taking place this Wednesday and Thursday. Marky is going to be speaking on Thursday about Instagram. So um, you want to make sure that you do register for that. Do you have any final words for our members this morning, Marky? Well, I think I've said it all, but stop getting ready to get ready to create video content. Um, the reason that I am never concerned about what my competition is doing is because I do what my competition does not do. 
there is no other person. Let me say this. There are two other people in the Chicago land marketplace who do what I do. That would be Cassandra Sneed and Nicole Wheatley. Cassandra Sneed, her, um, this is her second full-time year in real estate. She just earned six figures already this year. Nicole Wheatley's first full-time year in real estate, she earned $142,000 in gross closed income. So the people who have a business plan, who are willing to create ongoing marketing, we are getting them consistently to six-figure incomes in very short period of time if they take the action. Neither one of these young ladies care. I think they do care, but they don't allow their looks, right, mm -hmm. um, to take over the fact that they need to create video content consistently. All right. Well, thank you. And again, you can sign up to see Marky on Thursday. Again, we do have the link in the chat, but I'll go ahead and say it one more time. It's hr.com slash engage. Um, Marky, again, thank you so much. You've shared so much valuable information this morning. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to Thursday. Sign up right now. <laughs> Absolutely. So that is it for this Member Focus Monday. We'll see you guys next Monday at 9 a.m. Have a good day. Bye-bye.